Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall once again, and today we're talking about the Nurgle Magath Lords. Uh, for those of you who might have forgotten, might not be aware, never looked at those War Scrolls since you bought the book, that is Morbidex Twice Born, Orgot's Demon Spew, and Bloab Rot's Bond. So, with the rules changes in 3rd edition, these guys got way better. Like, way, way better. All three of them went down in points. Um, Bloab is 130, Morbidex is 135, and Orgots is... I'm sorry, not 135, 235. Uh, 230, and Orgots is 220. Um, they are heroes as well as monsters, so they get heroic actions and monstrous rampages. Uh, we have more command points available now for command abilities, so Orgots got better there. Uh, his command ability is more viable. Um, so our overall value proposition here is pretty dramatically increased. These guys are, are way, way better than they used to be. So let's take a dive into uh, each war scroll and take a look at what's going on. So up first is Bloab Rod Spawn. Um, he does have a 12-inch shooting attack. He can spit his bile at you. Um, you know, not a huge amount of damage coming out of that. Uh, D3 attacks, D3 damage. Outrend 2, though, so that's pretty good. 4s um, and 2s to hit and wound, respectively. Um, the wound is on the damage table, however, and the damage table for this dude is pretty steep. Um, he uh, gets bracketed after 3 wounds, so... Um, that is certainly a downside to him. He's on a 4-up save, 12 wounds, uh, so he's decently survivable, I would say. Uh, particularly for his points, he's decently survivable. Um, he's okay in melee. Um, his scythe is 3 attacks, 3s and 3s, rend 1, 2 damage. His uh, monstrous claws uh, start at 5 attacks, fours and twos, rend one, one damage. Um, so this guy has a couple of interesting abilities here. Um, first of all, he is a wizard. That is very important. Other wizards within 14 inches of him, um, enemy wizards, that is, are minus one to cast. And he has this ability called Demon Flies. At the start of your hero phase, roll a die for each enemy within 7 inches. And on a 4-up, you subtract 1 from hit rolls until your next hero phase. So that is um, a bigger bubble than you'd think. And it's bigger. It's big enough that you can keep it behind the lines and still be handing out the minus 1 to hits. The downside here is that this triggers in your hero phase, so you have to get him into position first. Um, and then in the next battle round, have the opportunity to use that ability. His spell here, Miasma of Pestilence, is actually um, also improved in 3rd edition. And um, overall was pretty solid before, but is just better now. Uh, so his casting value of 6, you pick an enemy unit within 14 inches. Um, and until your next hero phase, at any time that um, that unit suffers a wound or mortal wound, on a 2-up it suffers an additional D3 mortal wounds. Uh, and that is just once per phase. So, let's keep in mind now how often this is going to happen. So... In your hero phase, you cast this, you can potentially cast, uh, you know, Arcane Bolt or some other damage-dealing spell. So we have the first one in the hero phase. We don't really have anything in the movement phase. In shooting, this guy has a shooting attack that is just about the same range as the spell. Uh, and we do have the opportunity to move its 10 inches up to get that uh, shooting attack in range. 
Um, and we also have some other shooting attacks spread throughout Nurgle that are... Uh, they're minor shooting attacks, but they'll chip off one damage here and there. And one damage is all you really need to trigger the Miasma Pestilence. So that's, you know, shooting phase, a second D3. If this guy charges, um, he can use his uh, Stomp Monstrous Rampage to do D3 Mortal Wounds and get a third D3 on top of that. And then... In the combat phase, he'll probably get, you know, at least one wound onto whatever unit he targeted with Miasma of Pestilence and get a fourth D3 extra mortal wounds on top of that. Now, all of those are on two pluses, but a two plus is pretty easy to make. Um, so, you know, counting in there, the, uh, the Stomp, he has a potential for... 5d3 mortal wounds um, plus the other damage that he deals so he can just sort of be like this little bomb of mortal wounds and uh, other damage so he, although his offensive profile is not that exciting he is definitely more damaging than he looks like also he doesn't necessarily need to be the one doing the damage for Miasma of Pestilence. It's just targeting a unit and then anything that does damage to that unit then it gets this uh, additional D3 mortal wounds on a 2-up. So this guy's really good. 230 points. Um, definitely solid there. Uh, one thing to note here as well uh, that I did not off the top is that all three of these guys are unique characters so they can't take... Um, artifacts they can't take command traits uh they do they did get eroded to get uh one spell from the spell lore uh and uh, you know they get access to the rotbringer spell lore as well as the mortal spell lore so they have six spells to choose from up next is morbidex twice born uh he is a uh, similar profile to Blowab, except he's on a 3-up save. His shooting attack is only a 6-inch range, um, but he has you know, a better offensive profile. He has an additional 2 attacks. So, he is really more of your offensive hitter. Um, he can buff up your Nurglings and uh, replace models to Nurgling units that are within 7 inches of him. That's probably not a thing you're going to be doing terribly often, but, you know, new edition, new look at everything. Uh, Nurglings are, of course, worth taking a look at again as well. Uh, even though their scroll hasn't changed, uh, they could potentially just be value in different ways. Um... Nurgle's Rot, at the start of the hero phase, roll a die for each unit within three inches, and on a roll of six, it uh, deals D3 mortal wounds. So that's basically the same uh, ability that the Blight Kings have, except it's a different name, so you can do this in addition to the Blight Kings. It's, you know, chip damage that happens once in a while, but it's not horrible. Um, and then Repugnant Regrowth, roll a die at the start of the hero phase, um, on a 4+, plus heal 1 wound, and on a 6+, plus heal D3 wounds instead. Um, so he can heal, he can deal damage in the hero phase to things that are nearby. Um, he's a little bit heavier of a hitter. Uh, out of the three, he's got the best offensive profile. And... Um, if you're using Nurglings, he's certainly a go-to guy. Uh, Three-up save on 12 wounds can also benefit from Harbinger of Decay because he's a Nurgle mortal. So a three-up, five-up sounds pretty good. And if he uses his um, heroic action, his... Uh, oh, shoot. Why am I losing the name of this? His, uh, his best day ever, whatever that is... Um, he uh, ends up on a two-up save, or a Mystic Shield, or an all-out defense, uh, putting him on a two-up save. 
So he is certainly uh, pretty survivable and um, has some ability to get in there and scrap a little bit. This guy is my favorite, Orgot's Demon Spew. Now, he has uh, probably the worst offensive profile out of any of these. Um, five attacks, threes and threes, rend one, one damage. So he's doing less than the other two. Um, his uh, shooting attack is... Uh, D6 damage, but there's only one attack on threes and twos. Um, you know, when it hits, it hits like a truck. If it misses, it's going to miss a lot of the time. Um, so, uh, he's also on a three-up save. So that is very strong. You know, we have um, our heroic action that can boost our save, Mystic Shield, as we said before. Um and Harbinger of Decay that can give him a 5-up ward, so this guy could easily survive. Um, so, our, our other abilities um, is Fury of the Half-Blood. He adds D3 attacks to his Rod Axes when he makes a charge, uh, and at the end of the combat phase, uh, roll a die for each enemy model that was allocated wounds caused by the Rot Axes, and on a 4-up, the model suffers... Or, I'm sorry, the unit suffers an additional mortal wound. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Model. So, that's only going to be useful on multi-wound models. Um, and, uh, Acid Icker, roll a die each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model in the combat phase. On a 4-up, the attacking unit suffers one mortal wound after all of its attacks have been made. So he can... Um, he can bounce back uh, some mortal wounds in the combat phase. But his real value comes in here with his command ability. You can pick a Nurgle unit within 14 inches and re-roll failed wound rolls until your next hero phase. That is a really strong command ability. On Blight Kings, that is about as strong as the Glotkin's command ability to give you uh, an additional attack. Um, mathematically, it comes out to the same average. It's um, just a little bit different for uh, purposes of what the spread looks like. Um, you can hit higher numbers with Glotkin than you can with Orgots, but you uh, get much more reliable hits with Orgods. This guy is really my favorite out of the three, um, followed fairly closely by Blowab, to be totally honest. Um, and uh, he's only 220 points. Like, that is a pretty good value. He's a hero monster. He has... A, he has an attack profile. He's not an exciting attack profile. Um, he has a couple of decent abilities, and he has a really good command ability. So he's certainly a lot of value for you um, for how many points he is. Definitely much, much better than he used to be. This is you know, my new auto-include for right now for uh, my mortal lists. Um, although his command ability is for any friendly Nurgle, so that can also go on your demon models and your Slaves to Darkness models and your uh, Beasts of Chaos that you are including in um, as coalition units. So he's got some flexibility, definitely just really good all around. Um, I... I'm excited to be throwing him down on the table and playing with him. Um, I'm really curious to try a list with him and Blowab to see how that acts. Um, Morbidex, I'm a little less excited about. He's the most e expensive one of the three, and all he really does is melee. These guys appear to be priced out mainly based on their melee profile, and um, that leaves Orgots to be really good value as a support piece. 
So that is all for now, guys. I appreciate you watching. Thank you, as always. Don't forget to smash that like button and tickle the subscribe button for more videos. Uh, and if you're really excited, turn on notifications. Uh, you can go over and support us on Patreon. The link is down there in the description. And join us on Facebook and Twitter. The links for those are also down there in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you again soon.